Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss what is atmosphere. When you think about atmosphere, what is the first thought which comes to your mind? I believe it is air. And when you think about air, two most prominent gases, first carbon dioxide and second oxygen. These two gases come to your mind when you think about air. But let me tell you apart from these two gases, atmosphere contains lot of other gases apart from gases it has lot of dust particles these dust particles can also be called as aerosols or suspended particulate matter atmosphere also contains water vapors these gases dust particles and water vapors these three components are together forming atmosphere so let's talk about these sections in detail one by one so first we are going to discuss what exactly is atmosphere atmosphere acts like an envelope around the surface of earth so suppose this is your earth and this is your atmosphere which is looming around the surface earth now what is happening this atmosphere contains lot of gases these gases have gas molecules and each molecule has some escape velocity escape velocity is the speed with which these gas molecules can escape to outer space or outside your atmosphere now question comes what is the reason why these gas molecules are not escaping into the outer space rather they are looming around the earth surface in form of atmosphere so the reason is earth's gravity here earth's gravitational force is greater than escape velocity of these gas molecules and when gravitational force is greater than escape velocity gas molecules cannot escape to outer space but as you go beyond certain kilometers like beyond 1000 kilometers you will find these gas molecules will start escaping to outer space or you can say beyond 1000 kilometers escape velocity becomes greater than gravitational force so as you go up above the earth surface beyond certain kilometers you will find your atmosphere starts becoming rare this atmosphere is looming around the earth surface as a protective layer when i say it is behaving like a protective layer around the earth surface let's see what are the ways how it is providing protection to earth surface so first is by creating atmospheric pressure atmosphere is exerting some pressure that is called atmospheric pressure on earth surface and because of this atmospheric pressure water is available in liquid form if atmospheric pressure is not there water cannot exist in liquid form on earth surface second is by absorbing harmful solar radiations so what atmosphere is doing it is absorbing harmful solar radiations so sun is emitting solar radiations like uv ultraviolet rays x rays and gamma rays these radiations are high in energy and are short waves these radiations are extremely harmful for all life forms on earth apart from that they are also damaging crops and plants they are causing skin diseases like skin cancer so what atmosphere is doing atmosphere is preventing these lights from entering and stopping them from reaching earth surface so earth surface does not receive these harmful radiations so these are the two points how atmosphere is providing protection to earth let's see the third point which is warming the surface through heat retention heat retention is also called greenhouse effect greenhouse effect is the quality of atmosphere where atmosphere is trapping heat and earth is radiating this heat so now what is happening if you look at this diagram again earth is receiving some solar radiations earth's surface temperature is less than the temperature of these solar radiations after receiving solar radiations earth's surface temperature will go up and then earth starts emitting or radiating heat this heat will be trapped by atmosphere atmosphere will not allow this heat to escape to outer space and that is how atmosphere will provide a warm ring to earth surface 
and it will never allow the earth to become too cold if this heat retention quality is not present in atmosphere what will happen heat will escape to outer space and earth will become so cold that temperature will get reduced to somewhere around minus 18 degrees celsius this temperature is extremely cold for all life forms so slowly all type of life forms will start disappearing from earth surface that is why by providing this warm ring around the earth surface atmosphere is actually protecting all types of life forms apart from this atmosphere is reducing the temperature extremes between day and night so what is happening during daytime earth is receiving solar radiations but during night time there are no solar radiations atmosphere contains water vapors and different kinds of gases these water vapors and different gases are absorbing some solar radiations and also absorbing the heat which is radiated by earth this heat doesn't allow earth to become too cold during night time when solar radiations are not there these are few points how atmosphere is actually protecting earth now let's talk about the different uh, gases which are present in atmosphere atmosphere contains different types of gases at different layers in the atmosphere major constituents are nitrogen oxygen argon and carbon dioxide if you look at this pie chart you will find nitrogen is most abundantly found gas in atmosphere Second is oxygen which is 21%, then comes argon which is 0.93% and then comes carbon dioxide which is 0.03%. Concentration of carbon dioxide has been increased in past few decades and now it has reached somewhere around 400 ppm or you can say 0.04%. If you look at this table, these are some naturally found gases. Therefore, gases can be divided as naturally occurring gases and anthropogenic gases anthropogenic means man made gases or the gases which have been released because of human activities here human activities means fossil fuel combustion in power plants or combustion of fuel in vehicles or clearing forest or uh, agricultural activities these are some activities which are releasing man made or anthropogenic gases in atmosphere so let's see what are the classical examples of anthropogenic gases so these could be carbon monoxide ozone sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide these are some classical examples of anthropogenic gases if you talk about natural gases then it would be nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide hydrogen helium so these are some naturally occurring gases Apart from this, the gases can be grouped as non-greenhouse gases and greenhouse gases. But before seeing what are the classical example of greenhouse gases, let's understand what exactly is greenhouse effect. Before understanding what is greenhouse effect, let's see what is solar radiation and what is terrestrial radiation. Solar radiation is emitted by sun. These radiations are very very high in energy and have short wavelengths. Whereas if you talk about terrestrial radiations, these radiations are emitted by earth and they have less energy and long wavelength. If you look at this electromagnetic spectrum, you will find solar radiations which have very high energy like ultraviolet radiation, x-rays and gamma rays. These all short waves are traveling towards earth and emitted by sun. Terrestrial radiations are falling in category of infrared radiations. Now let's see what exactly is happening and how and when earth is emitting terrestrial radiations. So between sun and earth there is something called atmosphere. Atmosphere contains a lot of gases like carbon dioxide, methane, ozone, water vapors, clouds and many dust particles. Now what will happen? Solar radiations are traveling towards earth. Some of these solar radiations will be scattered or reflected back into the space by dust particles and clouds. Some of these radiations will be absorbed by water vapors and different gases and remaining solar radiations will finally reach earth. Here earth's surface temperature is less than the temperature of these solar radiations. So when earth absorbs these solar radiations, temperature of earth's surface will go up. Now earth will start radiating heat. This heat will be radiated at wavelength which falls in category of infrared radiations. These radiations are called terrestrial radiations. This radiated heat now will start traveling towards atmosphere. 
in atmosphere there are many gases which are called greenhouse gases these greenhouse gases will start absorbing this heat by trapping the heat these gases do not allow the heat to escape to outer space by trapping heat they are actually providing a warm ring or you can say they never allow earth surface to become too cold in absence of solar radiations this greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon of earth this has been there ever since the earth has evolved because of this greenhouse effect only life has evolved on earth surface if greenhouse effect is not there the average earth surface temperature would be somewhere around minus 18 degrees celsius which is very very cold for many life forms and slowly many life forms will start disappearing which is optimum for many life forms the problem is greenhouse effect which is caused by greenhouse gases has been aggravated because of higher concentration of greenhouse gases in atmosphere the concentration of greenhouse gases has been increased because of many human activities like production of electricity in power plants or the combustion of fossil fuels in vehicles there are many activities which are increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere and because of this the greenhouse effect has aggravated and it has increased the temperature of atmosphere because of that the global warming problem is happening now let's see what could be the example of greenhouse gases and non greenhouse gases basic difference between non greenhouse gases and greenhouse gas is the absorption of terrestrial radiation or you can say infrared radiation emitted by earth or the trapping of heat these non greenhouse gases cannot trap heat they are transparent for terrestrial radiation which is coming from earth classical example of non greenhouse gases would be nitrogen oxygen and argon greenhouse gases are the gases which can absorb the infrared radiations emitted by earth so example would be carbon dioxide methane water vapor nitrous oxide ground level ozone and chlorofluorocarbon now let's talk about the two other components of atmosphere other than gases that is dust particles and water vapors dust particles are the solid or liquid matter which are suspended in atmosphere these dust particles are also called as aerosols and suspended particulate matter these days because of pollution problem in india you must have heard about two terms that is called pm 10 and pm 2.5 here pm is signifying particulate matter and 10 or 2.5 signifies the size of dust particle so if you talk about pm 10 that means the diameter of particle is between 2.5 to 10 micrometer and when you say pm 2.5 its diameter is less than 2.5 micrometer apart from these two particles there are ultra fine particles which have diameter less than 0.1 micrometer so this was about the size of dust particles which are suspended in atmosphere now question comes how does atmosphere get these dust particles so there can be two sources one is natural one is anthropogenic so let's see what are the examples of natural dust particles it can be pollens or the volcanic eruption dust storm sea salt forest fire and grassland fire these are some natural sources of dust particles let's see what could be the example of anthropogenic dust particles it could be burning of fossil fuels in vehicles in power plants fly ash melting metals smoke suit and agricultural activities these are the sources anthropogenic sources of dust particles what does come to your mind when you first think about dust particles because all of us just want to get rid of dust particles dust particles are making us a sneeze they are causing a lot of diseases so we do not actually want dust particles around us but dust particles can be very very beneficial for us because they are playing really important roles in our climate so let's see what dust particles are doing and how they are beneficial for our earth surface our atmosphere contains a lot of dust particles these dust particles are basically scattering or reflecting the solar radiations which are coming from sun and by reflecting solar radiations they are preventing the earth surface from becoming very very hot so this is the first role which is performed by dust particles and second role is very very important because these dust particles are actually helping water vapors to form the clouds what is happening atmosphere contains a lot of 
of dust particles so these brown dots are suppose your dust particles apart from dust particles atmosphere has got water vapors so these are water vapors blue dots are water vapors these water vapors are in gaseous state to convert them into liquid droplets and solid ice crystals they need condensation nuclei so condensation nucleus is needed to convert these water vapors into liquid droplets and ice crystal these dust particles are actually behaving as a nucleus or condensation nucleus around these dust particles these water vapors are getting condensed and together dust particles and water vapors are forming clouds these are the two major roles which are played by dust particles let's see what are the water vapors atmosphere gets water vapor through the process of evaporation in this process of evaporation solar radiations are falling on water bodies on earth's surface and when they fall on water bodies they are increasing the temperature of water bodies and when temperature increases these liquid droplets will be converted into gaseous water vapors so these liquid water these liquid droplets are getting converted into water vapors or gaseous state so that is how our atmosphere is getting water vapors now let's talk about the amount of water vapor available in our atmosphere so the amount of water vapor which is available in our atmosphere varies region to region or it varies locally so the atmosphere which is lying above the equator has got higher concentration of water vapors and why because water vapors concentration directly depends on the rate of evaporation if evaporation rate is high that means more amount of water vapors are coming to atmosphere and this rate of evaporation is again directly proportional to temperature therefore the areas which are lying around the equator they have higher temperatures like warm and wet tropics these areas have higher water vapor concentration in their atmosphere when you move away from equator towards the pole the temperature starts decreasing when temperature decreases the rate of evaporation also decreases and that decreases the amount of water vapors which are present in atmosphere apart from this the amount of water vapor also varies with altitude or you can say with height as you move up so suppose this is your earth as you move up the amount of water vapors in the atmosphere starts decreasing so this was all about water vapors dust particles and gases which are present in atmosphere in my next video i am going to talk about the different layers of atmosphere